order at 5.05. Bye, Beth. Duncan says hi. Hi, everyone. So the first agenda item is review and discuss joint meeting agenda items for board alignment. All board members have the joint meeting agenda. So you need my place out there, probably sitting in your place. Not hearing who's talking. Duncan said he has the joint meeting agenda already. Um, the topics on the joint meeting are discuss the village garage improvements, discuss impossible action on jointly owned property MOU, discuss possible action regarding River Road East, uh, discuss possibly sign. Uh, compromised stormwater MOU, discussion of joint bidding process for fuel, discussion on conditions and future plans of Old Mill House, as well as lower storage building, uh, discuss the cost feasibility for a merger plan, and discuss future plans of the backup. Okay, so one that I've got is This meeting is being recorded by GME TV through Zoom, correct, Beth? Yes. I'm going to make a suggestion in the items. And that suggestion then is that item number one, discuss large improvements. Uh, item two and item three are all appropriate for executive session. And I would suggest to recommend that we do those items in executive session. Okay. Uh there is a potential executive session. Um, do any other board members have questions about four through 10? Would four go along with number three? Yes. I think that makes sense, yeah. Yes, I think it would. I think you're right, Carl. What did Carl say? Sorry. Carl is also suggesting that item number four. OK, good. That's what I was going to suggest, too. OK, yep. Is also appropriate for executive session. Okay. Uh, any other comments on five through ten from the board? Um, if you're asking if there are discussion points, I think we should discuss um, number six, which is the old mill old mill house, and what the board, how the board wants to discuss that, like how do we want to approach it? Um, I guess that'll be the first topic on the list that I think is worth warrants a discussion. Yeah. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on the future plans for Old Mill House, Beth? Um, I just want to make sure that we are discussing both um I, I think the old mill house falls into the MOU discussion too so that's an important aspect to it um but I don't know of specific plans that we have other than it's been on a maintenance list of ours um and it's one of the houses that we had put in put on a prioritized list for efficiency analysis um if there are other things that folks think are potential future plans for the house i would like to discuss them and i'm actually curious about thoughts on the maintenance aspect too because i think that will come up in the 
joint meeting <clears throat> discussion. I have lots of concerns about painting the building without having any preparation done, which Gigi has suggested could be done in the bill and therefore not fall under the lead abatement um, rules and regulations in the state. I would really like to see us, I, I, I would be strongly opposed to that. Um, I would really like to see us consider other alternatives. I think painting that building and doing it under the lead paint removal abatement regulations is going to be very expensive. And I think long-term we should consider at least the possibility of removing the existing siding and replacing with some other form of siding as an alternative. I have another idea about the use of the building, which I don't, I suppose I can throw out there and I may throw out there at the joint meeting. And that would be the possibility of selling that building, uh, creating its own lot, selling the building, you know, ideally, I would love to see that building become a hostel or, you know, a, a place where uh, it could be used as part of a, an active part of the rail trail, uh, supporting the rail trail development. Um, so that's a, that's a longer discussion. But, uh, Mark, I can't hear you at all if that's Mark. I think typically what people are doing now is spiking and overruling, not disturbing any um, possible life. Just enough, but I would certainly be open to I guess my, my thought is that we should explore alternatives other than just paint, whatever they may be. I'm supportive of that as well. Yeah, I think the my big concern is that we address the uh, kind of desire to paint it and and figure out you know, with alternatives to that because it's prohibitively expensive to do the lead abatement and painting. And, uh, you know, it, it is an eyesore. I, I do agree with Gigi on that, but I also don't think that, you know, we should just encourage her to handle it on our own. So <clears throat> that seems to be what she's looking for. It's a large liability. So going into the joint meeting, our question for the folks in the joint meeting is, are you open to, like, are they also looking to, open to having discussions about future use and also having discussions about alternates to painting of the building? Those are the two things we're basically saying, right? Yeah, I think that's, that sums it up. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, item number seven is discussion on the condition and future plans of lower storage building. Um, my guess, this is going to be the question about whether to turn the heat off or not and the water service to that building, given the heating system that's in there. Uh, I'm not supportive of it, but I am guessing at the discussion, which is not always the best thing to do. I'm just talking from that perspective. I am i don't think that turning the heat off in that building is the best thing to do for the taxpayers of the town or the village. 
I completely agree, and I wonder if it wouldn't make sense to see if we could get a qualified heating and ventilating consultant contractor to come and give us an opinion. I mean, Greg Tatro told me that he thought it would be very short-sighted because that building has radiant floor heating to shut the heat off altogether because it might cause cracking of the slabs and damage to the heating system. Um, I think it would be worthwhile trying to get somebody who really knows those radiant floor heating systems to give us an opinion. Yeah, we could certainly ask if the if the village is interested in that and sharing the cost of getting some analysis done or a, not analysis. We put that in our efficiency plan. That was pretty low. That was pretty low. Yeah. <clears throat> because I think it was low on the air. I mean, fairly uh, keeping the heat on there as long as we're not eating the whole outside, which seems like there's a possibility. I mean, you keep the heat out at 45 or something. It's nice to do with radiant. But if there's raccoon tunnels through the building, which is a separate issue that should be addressed, for sure. Speaker. They're going to be meeting at the big table. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, no problem. Uh, thank you, Mark. Any comments, Shane? No, I, um, that is one that I haven't gone to visit yet. So I've only kind of heard things about, uh, you know, the, the needs there. So I'll kind of defer to others on that one. But I definitely am all for getting more information before we, uh, any decisions. So I like the idea of having someone come and tell us whether that would be safe or not. As a general comment, sort of a follow-up to what Shane just said was, I hope that we don't make any actual decisions tonight, that we don't agree to anything specifically without going back and talking about it again. I, I The reason I say that is I think we made a mistake when we signed, when we agreed to sign that original MOU. I, I think we would have be benefited considerably from having, from going back and having further discussions about that. Um, so, you know, I guess I can't prevent anybody from making a motion uh, to approve a particular action or item, but I hope we don't do that. I think it's we would benefit by having further discussions. Does anybody know, is that on um, creating heat system full of glycol or something? Or is it just straight up water? I think there is some antifreeze in it. I don't know. I mean, certainly a, the possibility of closing it down. Then it's in a darn well better be comfortable with antifreeze. Yeah. And that would be, you know, that would be something that a qualified consultant could tell us, you know, this needs to be done. And, do that. and they can test the answers like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. for sure. You'd be looking for a building engineer, a structural engineer to do this or somebody that's a, that's a, that's the kind of heating work commercially. Mm -hmm. We do have a contract with um, a heating and ventilating company to do, you know, like them. We do have a HVAC contractor, and there are other uh, HVAC vendors that maybe we could get quotes from. Yeah. Um, but I don't think involving a mechanical engineer and all that's really needed for that level of information. Yes. Not really applying something there in the orientation. We can talk about the issue that you were just talking about. And um, he, was, he referred to it as a raccoon building. And he mentioned about one of the concerns is turning off the heat is that, that the, um, the whatever is in the radiant floor uh, right. pipes could freeze. 
So he seemed to be under the impression that what was there was not adequate to prevent treason. <clears throat> I think that there's going to be a response to that about putting some sort of an antifreeze in the system. Um, but it feels like we have consensus on we're not going to be ready to act, but we're definitely open to having discussion about it. And we'd like to get we'd like to ask to get a professional to assess the impact of turning off the heating, uh, if that is what the discussion is about. Um, and I just am trying to wrap this item up because we are at 520 and I have a feeling that our executive session is going to get pretty close to six o'clock um, if we don't jump over to that around 5.30. I think the next two items are pretty straightforward. I did uh, talk with Jason about item number nine today. I agree we need to keep moving. Um, right now, uh, yeah, the crew thinks it will be good to keep the current back on. Um, and, and we do all the taxpayers uh, redo of the capital equipment purchasing for you. Um, so if a cost analysis works out in an excavator, um, they believe that would be the better buy for the town. That's just a heads up as of right now. Okay. Um, everybody's good with the other items. I would. I'm not quite good with the other items. We have the okay. discussion on cost of feasibility on the proposed merger plan. Merger plan. Is there yeah. anything that we need to get on the same page on around that? Uh, my only question was, there is no proposed merger plan. So I'm not yeah, sure. there it is. Is there? I, I mean, I, I haven't seen anything that actually says this is what will... Oh, um, okay. Maybe I missed it. I was, I was looking through my email for all that stuff today, and I couldn't find anything that was a specific plan. Yeah, um, at where I stand on that item specifically, uh, the voters of the town and the voters of the village have voted to continue these discussions. Um, I have some information on both that were taken, uh, town meeting day um, and village meetings. There's overwhelming support for a merger, but I do believe that the costs need to be shared 50-50 with the town and the village. Uh, to I think we need to be careful about how we talk about the votes because the votes weren't to merger, right? The votes were for a study in the first vote and the second vote was for the two entities, the town and the village, to continue discussions on merger. I just want to point that out. Yeah, um, we have discussed it in the past. Um, we could continue discussing the same things that we have previously. Yeah, that's what the board's flaw. You're, you're fading, Evan. I'm not catching what you're saying. I hear what you said. So, um, the agenda item for tonight says discussion discussion on the cost and feasibility of proposed merger plan. And from what I found looking back at town meeting the mornings was that the village and the town approved having a study done. And I believe that was completed by the Center for Government Resources. Yeah. And then the voters approved getting a report I guess from the town trust, from select like board and the village trustees. But to Shane's point, I don't think that there has been a plan prepared, does there? There has not. There's a quote. Right. There's a proposal from the CGR to prepare a to, plan. To prepare. Yes. But maybe I'm misunderstood. Yeah. That's, I, um, yeah. That's, that I have to, you know, I, I think they were pretty clear that they want buy in from both entities on moving forward, I think, before they um, they put together a plan. I don't know if that means they want us to be 100% committed to the final project or product, which I don't know if we can guarantee that. We can't. We can't. Right. Um, but, but I guess my, my point is there is no 
actual proposed merger plan. There is maybe this this proposal to get more of, of, right, to actually get a plan created, but um, yeah, without without an actual merger plan, I don't know what we would be discussing. So, as a question for the select board, would you agree to sharing the cost for the proposal from the center? And starting the process over the, do you want to yeah. talk about it tonight and then discuss it yeah. later on and then get back to the village? It would be nice to get out, take the temperature of the village trustees. Would you be willing to share the cost of having a plan develop? We, I don't feel like I can talk about costs and feasibility without knowing more. Of the so let's start at the first cost, which would be bringing in, bringing in somebody to, to pull together a plan. I mean, this this happened right here later. Well, we have a specific proposal. Do you know off the top of your head how much that proposal is? I'm looking at it right now. Fifty-nine thousand dollars. Um, that was January. given as a proposal January 13th, 2023. The cost may have gone up, but I can't see it doubling in five months. Well, we have specifically said that we would even agree to 50, share, you know, 50% of the cost. So I think we, at some point, not, I don't think tonight is the right night to do that. But I think we should decide whether or not, if if the board agrees, if the trustees agree, that they're willing to do a cost share on it. You know, at some point, we need to pull the plug and say, "Yep, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll do the other percentage, whatever that arrives at." But well, I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, I think the trustees should pull it up and say, "Yes, we're willing to, you know, proceed to the next step, or no, we're not." You know, if the answer is no, we're not. Then it's a different ballgame. Well, yeah, that's kind of a moot point because we would at the very least need to find someone other than CGR to do the plan for us. Or um, come up with a different plan for whether or not we want to move forward. I mean, right. one one possible option would be for village residents to circulate a petition, um, you know, to actually clarify it, right, yeah. what they want. Um, you know, so there's, there's different avenues that could be pursued, but if, if we don't have commitment from that the trustees that they're willing to proceed on this proposal, then we need to back up and take that a different approach. To be public, yeah. I think it should. I think the village voters and the town voters need to hear that now, <clears throat> one party or the other, I mean, is not willing to pursue. Did the town mm -hmm. include its share of this proposal in the uh, new budget year that starts July first? Unfortunately, we did not. We do have a, a line item in the budget for our select board consultants and services, and I don't remember what the dollar amount is, but it's close, and it would probably be something we'd have to look at the surplus. Yeah. Or, yeah. or our money. Or our money. That is a possibility. Yeah. Um, so, are we? Is there any other topics you want to discuss before executive session, Beth? No. Nope. Okay. I would. There's one I would like to discuss. Okay. Because one item on here is set a, a meeting date for future joint board meetings. I'm gonna say right here that I think these joint meetings are. A, pretty much a waste of time. <laughs> and I don't know that I really want to continue doing this. Um, you know, I, I think we may be at a point in time where some of these things could be ironed out um, either through written communication, you know, uh, through the administrator managers or the boards. I'm just, I'm just expressing a frustration over these meetings. I don't, I don't think they're particularly productive in my I'm not thrilled about participating in them. 
Okay. That could certainly, we can discuss it on this number of times. Six. Six. This time, uh, I would entertain a motion on the findings. Uh, we discussed uh, agenda items one through four in executive session, and that to do so would put the uh, town at a disadvantage. Uh, to, yeah. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Can I just ask to do so publicly would put the town at a disadvantage? To discuss these items publicly would put the town at a disadvantage. Yes. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify with an aye. Aye. All, aye. Those, all those opposed? And the ayes have it. Now I would entertain a motion to enter executive session. Um. Uh, uh, pursuant to executive, or sorry, 1 BSA 313A3. Is that okay? There's a motion. Is there a second? Duncan seconded. Uh, any further discussion? None. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 All those opposed? You guys have it. Continuing executive session at 532. Um. Um, executive session at 5.53 with no other items. Uh, that concludes our meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.